in Southeast Georgia and the Low Country. This is WJCL 22 Morning News. See us Rick now. Berta, why did you kill your wife and your well, son? Wants to know. A heated debate over evidence in the murder trial of Alec Murdoch. What state prosecutors are fighting to include and how close we could be to opening statements. A judge could soon decide whether to publicize the Trump election probe in Georgia. The reason the person who started it is now pushing to keep the findings private. More classified documents have been found, this time at former Vice President Mike Pence's home. I'm Amy Lou in Washington with when and how many were found. And a special makeover for this iconic Savannah landmark, the group responsible for the major upgrade. We want to thank you so much for starting your day with us right here on WJCL 22. Good morning. I'm Emma Hamilton. And I'm Frank Sulkowski. Meteorologist Jonathan Myers is here. And Jonathan, do you have your umbrella handy? I'm ready. Ready to go. You need it. Have it handy yeah. for today. Not so much this morning, but later today. Mm -hmm. Good chance of rain and it's on its way. And uh, we'll see inland areas late morning. But if you live along I-95 mm -hmm. between 3 and about 5 o'clock, you'll see that okay. rain. So it's right at that rush hour mm -hmm. coming later take impact weather day for us and that is due to a chance for isolated severe thunderstorms this afternoon that it will be a possibility the greatest threat will be maybe some winds gusting over 40 miles per hour and also there's a small threat for isolated tornadoes of course we'll be tracking out for you throughout the daytime the timing inland areas 11 o'clock closer to the coast around three and five o'clock away from your tv today to track out the chance for severe weather for free just download our wjcl 22 news app right to your smartphone so starting things off this morning the impact times like i showed you late morning into uh, the afternoon temperatures are quickly warming up a lot of us already into the uh, upper 50s and low 60s we'll see 72 around 72 at least for highs day around lunchtime there's that highest chance of rain that'll take you all the way through the afternoon and you see that rain back off to our west north georgia all the way down toward the panhandle of florida even a tornado watch out for parts of the panhandle of florida we may see this watch extended further to the east as we go through the morning of course i'll be tracking this out for you in future cast we'll look ahead to some chilly weather that is headed our way by tomorrow no divorce no separated no left him no Nothing. So this is a fabrication. He had been stealing for over a decade, 99 counts to date, and facing essentially life without parole. We are just hours away now from day three of the Alec Murdoch murder trial. Today, jury selection is set to continue as well as hearings about which evidence will be allowed in the trial. Now, we told you yesterday the defense, they filed several pretrial motions back on Monday regarding evidence put forth by the state. One motion sought to exclude state testimony from a sled firearms analyst who says casings from the murder scene match casings from a weapon Murdoch owns. The judge ruled to allow that ballistic expert to testify. Both sides also agreed to hold a council hearing away from jurors about blood spatter evidence. Of course, we'll let you know what happens with that. Now, ABC's chief legal analyst Dan Abrams is weighing in on the evidence in this case. You know, it's not as strong as many people think, right? I mean, because all of us who've been following this case have been following everything about all right. the financial crimes, et cetera, and other instances that have happened. But when you just focus on the investigation here, the murder case, the evidence isn't that strong. Basically, the key evidence is putting him at the crime scene when he says he wasn't there, possibly the blood spatter uh, evidence uh, from the shirt, and a possible motive that he wanted to basically silence uh, his son. He wanted to avoid a financial investigation that was part of a civil lawsuit that his son had been uh, involved in, et cetera. It's just not all that powerful. Now, Abrams added prosecutors need a motive because there's a lack of evidence against Murdoch. Now, coming up at 7 on Good Morning America, what Abrams has to say heading into day three, including his biggest takeaway, from day two and at three on Dr. Phil, the bizarre chain of events that were triggered when Alec Murdoch says he found his wife and son shot dead. And of course, WJCL 22 is bringing you live coverage every single day from jury selection to testimonies and the highly anticipated verdict in the Murdoch murder trial. 
Catch our live coverage from Colleton County each day on WJCL 22 News beginning at 5 o'clock. Happening today, the governors of both Georgia and South Carolina will deliver their state of the state addresses. South Carolina Governor Henry McMaster is set to give his speech at 7 o'clock tonight at the State House. Georgia Governor Brian Kemp will deliver his speech before the State General Assembly at 11 o'clock this morning. A judge will soon decide whether to release a special grand jury report focused on former President Donald Trump's alleged efforts to overturn the 2020 election here in Georgia. Now, we told you yesterday a judge would begin examining this case. So far, no decision has been made on it. But District Attorney Fannie Willis, who's been behind the probe, says she doesn't want the report released to the public. In this case, the state's understands the media's inquiry and the world's interest. But we have to be mindful of protecting future defendants' rights. Now, the judge says that he will consider arguments from both sides and reach out to both parties with any questions before making a final decision. Well, all new this morning, officials say they found classified documents at former Vice President Mike Pence's Indiana home. Our Amy Lou is in Washington with how this discovery happened. Well, following the recent discoveries of documents at President Biden's home and former office, Pence's lawyer says he requested a review for potential documents stored at his home out of an abundance of caution. FBI agents visited Pence's home late Thursday night to collect a total of four boxes containing papers, two in which a small number of documents had classified markings. Two others were labeled courtesy copies of vice presidential papers. A Pence aide says the boxes were not kept in a secure location, but were taped shut without evidence of tampering. Pence's attorney says the National Archives and Justice Department are involved, but neither has commented on what investigations may be underway. Pence says he was unaware that the documents were at his home, despite him saying that he did not take any classified information when he left office. In Washington, I'm Amy Liu. Right now, the U.S. is finalizing plans to send 30 tanks to Ukraine in its continued fight with Russia. According to the Biden administration, the delivery could happen as early as this week. Now, yesterday we heard from South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham, who recently visited Ukraine. Seldom in the history of modern warfare is so much depended on so few tanks. 300 tanks given to the Ukrainians who have an ability to take any weapon system and maximize its benefit, I think will determine, will change the outcome of this war. Several senators, including Graham, are asking for long-range artillery and other weapons, as well as transformers and generators and increased funding to help Ukraine. All new this morning, an iconic Savannah landmark is getting a makeover. We want to get right out to our Nakaya Carrero, who is live for us this morning. And Nakaya, walk us through what's uh, set to happen there behind you. Well, Emma, as you see behind me, I'm standing in front of the iconic globe that sits on Duran Avenue right before Abercorn Street, and it's been here since the 50s. But even though it's had many looks over the years, it has not changed in nearly 25 years. So many people wonder, you know, with all the construction going on in the area, what will happen with the globe? Well, Savannah Alderman Nick Palumbo posted these pictures on Twitter yesterday saying they're now repainting it and it looks like it'll be the same design as before. He said they even brought in muralist Eric Hen, the same person who painted it back in 1999. It's big, it's bold, it's beautiful. It's 60 foot in diameter made of U.S. steel uh, and it's incredible to see it back in action again. During yesterday's news conference, we also asked Savannah Mayor Van Johnson what he'd like to see done with the Globe. Um, the Globe is so synonymous with uh, Midtown Savannah. Everyone has a Globe story. Um, and so I would love for it to be where it is available, uh, viewable, uh, accessible. 
Later this morning, Parker's gas station, who now owns the property that the Globe is sitting on, will hold a press conference to talk about the future of the Globe. Also coming up in 30 minutes, I'll walk you through the long 70 year history of the Globe, the many looks and the many uses it's had over its history. And coming up in 30 minutes, Nakaya, I want to uh, see you on top of that globe. That would be uh, that would be something. <laughs> no, okay. Our Nakaya Carrero. That's more of a Frank thing to do. That's more of a Frank thing. <laughs> Did you hear? I'm standing on top of the world. <laughs> All right, our Nakaya Carrero exactly. live in Savannah <laughs> this morning. Nakaya, thank you. And. We want to hear from you. You can scan the QR code on your screen. It's at the top left there, or you can go to WJCL.com slash vote to vote in our live interactive poll this morning. And we want to know, are you most, what are you most excited for coming to Duran Avenue? Right over by that globe, they are building a new Starbucks, a new Chick-fil-A, the new Parker's already opened, or maybe you're excited about the renovated globe. Right now it's you know, it's pretty much a split. Uh, it's looking like Starbucks is actually taking the lead here with 40% and Chick-fil-A and the renovated globe coming behind it. And no love for Parker's this morning, I guess. You just head over and vote. WJCL.com slash vote.